Welcome to the Brand Theory Podcast, the podcast for helping you uncover your passion, realize your purpose, and take the aligned action. Together, we're going to prove the theory that when we live our lives on brand, the possibilities become limitless. I'm your host, Danielle Marchesi, branding expert and business coach. Let's get started. Hello, my on-brand listeners. Welcome back to another episode of the Brand Theory Podcast. I am super excited about this episode. Today, we are sitting down with Naomi Junich. After working as a receptionist for four years, Naomi knew there was more to her future than sitting behind a desk and serving others. She moved to the UK and realized there was a possibility of traveling around Europe and serving others. She didn't hesitate to take the opportunity. Starting out as a virtual assistant, Naomi started helping numerous creatives and coaches feel wild and free. Since then, she's found her true passion as a system strategist and has been supporting creatives in the online space on the importance of automation CRMs in order for them to streamline their business and save time without having to work around the clock. Naomi is your girl next door type of gal. If you need support, you can definitely count on her to get the job done. When she's not behind her laptop, you can usually find her in the kitchen baking desserts, yum, traveling the world when there isn't a world pandemic going on, or dreaming about becoming a dog mom in a couple of months. Welcome to the show, Naomi. Hey, thanks. And a little bit of backstory, guys. This is the second time she's been on, but the first time we're airing the episode because I let the episode sit for a really long time and the file completely got corrupted. And in timeliness there's just been a lot of changes in both of our businesses. And I thought it'd be amazing to have her back on and just retouch base as friends and have an amazing, another amazing conversation that we will definitely make sure (laughs) gets, makes it on the air this time. Um, So again, thank you for doing this again. And I know we heard a lot about you in your intro, but I would love to hear in your own words, kind of a little bit more about your journey, how you got to this point in business and what's been going on. Yeah, for sure. And I'm so glad that you reached out because I remember um, when you had reached out, I was like, Oh, there's a lot of things that are very much outdated from when my last <laughs> intro. Um, but I'm so glad to be quote back, even though it's the first time, <laughs> um, I guess like to give a backstory from what we had recorded before at the time I was just starting out and switching over to be a system strategist for wedding photographers specifically and helping out like automating their back end because mm-hmm. a lot of people just end up spending a lot of their admin and like communication and client stuff when in fact they should instead be focusing on what they do most so like photographers they need to focus on photography um but since then a lot has changed in terms of like who my audience is and who I speak more towards and now I'm gearing more towards system strategy still um but with specializing more in Dubsado for creative entrepreneurs so I yeah so I basically do pretty much a similar thing. It's just a bigger, a wider range of supporting, not just wedding photographers, but all kinds of photographers, web designers, anyone who falls under the creative entrepreneur aspect. Love that. That's so cool. Okay. So I know for me personally, and actually since we last talked, I gave in a little bit better about using systems and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but for new people, I feel like, well, not everyone, I shouldn't even say that. Systems can be scary and CRMs is just that symbol alone can be scary. So, Mm -hmm. and I, I'm excited to talk to you about that because I feel like there's always ways to use these systems that are quote unquote on brand for us. Um, so how did you get kind of started with understanding and loving systems in general? Um, well, it's, it's kind of funny. I, I think it's funny a little bit because um, I, back before I started like my whole business and even when I, I didn't even know what a system strategist, system workflows, automations, all those, I didn't even know what, what those were, but I was still doing them for corporate companies just for being nice. Mm. Um, a lot of the jobs that I was working at corporate jobs, I was basically like learning on the spot. I didn't have a proper onboarding process. So they would tell me, Oh, like it takes about three months to like fully train someone and get onboarded. And so when I would leave, I would want to, I would think like, okay, like if I was something, someone coming into this person's shoes, I would want to know how they run their business, how, how they like do everything and then be able to kind of go on off of that. So I would be making processes based on what I learned and how to be able to streamline things. And it just, from there, these companies are, I think they're still using my processes and it's just helped streamline their whole like onboarding process to where like 
I would train some of the people re- uh, that would be replacing me and they would get trained, fully trained in like a week and a half. Yeah. Um, okay. So it was a really pretty quick turnaround. And then um, fast forward when I was still like, you know, kind of doing VA because I was a virtual assistant when I first started. Um, a photographer reached out and said, Hey, like, can you just set up the saddle for me? And I'm like, sure. Like, why not? (laughs) With that. And as, as I was going about it, I'm like, this is actually what I've kind of been doing (laughs) this whole time for the last couple of years. And it's just something that I love. I don't know how to explain it. It's just something that I love doing, just figuring out like, okay, this piece goes here, this piece goes there this is just like way too much. This is too extra. This is how we can like streamline it a lot more. And of course, with a lot of practice, because with systems, it is scary because it's so variable. It's so Mm. different from person to person. And so as much as we look at like people's behind the scenes and try to look at how they do their business, we can try to mimic that as much as we can. But for our own business, we may have our own press preferences that changes everything so much. Mm. And so I've learned that over time that a lot of people just have different things overall and being able to just kind of go in and be like, Hey, I can make whatever thing that you have that you don't call a process and just make it into something that overall saves you time. It just makes it easier for you in the long run. Yeah. I love that. That's awesome. It's like taking something that somebody else can't stand and using your superpower to help them. I love that. We all have, we all have that zone of genius. And when somebody, I started my business doing websites and I still do them for on referral basis only. And when I do them because it's a referral basis only doesn't happen often mm-hmm. when I do them and figure out, like you're saying, this piece goes here, this is too much or this graphic or this or that, or I could do mm-hmm. a background, I could do a code, yep, yep. all that. It's once it's done and they're like, Oh my God, that's so cool. It's that feeling of, you know, how much it went into completing mm-hmm. that puzzle is so rewarding. So yeah, it's a very similar feeling. It's so cool. Um, okay. So you're, I want to revert back to your brand name for a second and then continue yeah. into the system. Systems. So your business is called Wild and Free Services. Who is Wild and Free Services, the brand, and what makes you different from others in your field? Mm, yeah. So in reality, the name kind of came off of a whim. Um, I think it was supposed to be like a potential podcast name that my husband and I were like talking back in the day, um, like early on because of COVID stuff. Yeah. And like I've just kind of adopted the name because not just of my story of like wanting to become quote, wild and free and be able to work anywhere and be able to like be anywhere and take vacations whenever I need, especially with um, running errands by flying home from England back to Michigan to be able to do stuff and have that flexibility. I wanted to be able to have like have people be able to do the same thing because we, as you say, we all have our zone of geniuses and sometimes we don't realize that the thing, our own business are the things that hold us back. So why not be able to be quote wild and free with the thing that you love doing and be able to serve other people. Yeah. Um, and what makes what I really, at least what wild and free is, is not just helping people, but also being able to help them realize the importance of it as well. And I'm, I'm really working towards, gearing towards the importance of filling your own cup before ser- before others as well because it's so easy to get involved with every single piece of your own clients and that's what a lot of people have a hard time with automating too but in reality the less as long as we keep it simple or the less that we do of things that don't actually make us money the more that we can actually show up to our clients. We don't realize that like sending like a whole bunch of emails of like follow-ups aren't the thing that is going to matter to the client. What's going to matter is when you're actually there to be able to help them when they need it the most. Yeah. And so Wild and Free Services is not just helping them there, but also being able to help businesses and empower them to be able to automate as much as as they can to be able to serve more clients in the future. Yeah, absolutely. I love that explanation of it. So do you work mainly with businesses who are fairly established or businesses who are just starting or a little bit of both? Um, it's a little bit of both. It's on, it's very much on a case to case basis. Um, I, at least right now from who I have been serving, it's been business owners. I've worked with people who have been like blown up from TikTok and they're like, I need some systems right now. And I'm no way. Yeah. I've That's awesome. 
who have had system, like they've had Dubsado or a, a CRM sitting, but have not done anything for yeah. three years. Now they have all these spreadsheets and they're like, can you please come and clean it up? So I've kind of worked a little bit of both. Wow. That yeah. TikTok thing is awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Every time I'm on there, it's like the, I feel like, you know, you see those, those, um, those ones for saying, apparently TikTok can blow up my business overnight. Let's give it a try. And then you look at the likes and it's like 500,000. Like what the heck am I doing wrong on this platform? I know. I know. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, the algorithm has changed so much. Like, I'll be honest, I spend way too much time there, but it's, I think it's honestly just like an algorithm thing. Yeah. Anything. Like I have, who knows? Yeah, right? Who <laughs> knows? already knows? <laughs> <laughs> the mystery of the algorithms will always be a mystery. There's going to be a Netflix documentary that comes out in 10 years. The mystery. Honestly. Of the algorithms. <laughs> um, okay, cool. So if we were a potential client, right? Or maybe somebody who's looking to figure out how to automate systems that they have, and maybe it's the spreadsheet that they already have, or they have nothing. Mm -hmm. Where should we start with trying to outsource or trying to clean up the mess, the chaotic mess that we've created in our business. Right. Right. Um, okay. So I think the first thing that we, I know this is a little cliche, but it's really brainstorming and writing down everything that you have. I know like, it's so not cliche. It just um, it's drives I know, on the point of practice. how important that prep work is and that foundation. I know, I know. And I say like cliche because I remember back then I'm like, yeah, why don't we need a brainstorm? I'm like, totally. Brainstorming is like not important. Totally. But you don't realize like putting everything on paper or like, I literally have this like gigantic mirror um, on my closet where I just like write everything down. It just makes a world of a difference in realizing, um, what, where you're missing pieces, because as, as long as you like, you know, you may be forgetting, oh, I keep forgetting to send a zoom link or like, I keep forgetting to do this. When you write everything down, including like, what are the emails you're sending? Because that's something a lot of people don't realize. Um, you could realize like, oh, actually I can hyperlink the zoom link here. I don't have to worry about it. Or, oh, I can send a scheduler and then I don't have to like schedule something for someone in the future. So brainstorming is just like, just just please just write everything down first and be able to like visually see your whole process. It's going to look very much overwhelming, but from there, once you finish brainstorming, I always say, go in and ask, okay, what am I, what am I being extra about? What, what's just like way too much or like something mm -hmm. that's a lot that you can kind of like minimize. I want you to like be able to cut down as much as you can and then be able to kind of like assess their what you need to be able to like replace it with. Is there something that you can replace with? Is it something you need to cut out completely because it just is something that's not really relevant. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes when it comes to emails as well, um, sometimes three emails can be converted into one with clear steps of, okay, here are the next steps. Once you do this, then you're going to get the invoice. And then after the invoice, you're going to get this instead of sending like three different kinds of emails, because eventually what can happen is that the client eventually doesn't open your emails. Mm -hmm. And when it's something important, of course, you have deliver deliverables that you have to do. It makes it really hard to kind of like make sure that they open the emails because they're just emails that aren't really that important to be open. And they can't tell that from the, a subject line if all mm -hmm. the emails are like that. Um, but after you've kind of like assessed everything and realize you, you know, there's no longer anything that you can cut out. Um, that's really the place at that point where you want to make the decision of, okay, is, is where I am at this point, something that I need to hire an actual person or do I need to like, or would a CRM potentially be something that could be of use right now? Because a lot of people tend to like go one way or another where they hire a virtual assistant, but they realize they're just kind of like handing over the things that they're just kind of like putting a bandaid over mm. versus when you have a CRM, a CRM can automate a lot of things that are repetitive. And I always say like the repetitive tasks that you're doing over and over and over again, sending contracts, sending invoice, Zoom links, those are things that, that a CRM can essentially take care of for you. Um, whereas a virtual assistant or an assistant of sorts, um, I think would work best if your process is a lot more custom, um, depending on the time. So like for web designers, if they have a project date, um, then a lot of the system like CRM stuff can take care of that because it's just like, Oh, like 
I'll just send stuff according to how many days before or after mm -hmm. the date or whatever. But if you have something that's kind of like a little bit more custom, so for example, I'm working with an interior designer right now, and there's a lot of things that are variant depending on like actual like real time things. If a plumber comes in, if um, you know something kind of gets delayed, it's a little bit more up in the air that a CRM can't really take care of. Um, so that's kind of like some things that you may want to go about. Um, I always recommend try to systemize everything with a CRM at first um, and then going for a VA if you're not sure of like which one to go for because it's better to automate as much as you can and then get someone to, who specializes in something and mm -hmm. take care of that and then everything that's kind of repetitive does its own thing. Got it. Okay. That makes sense. I really and just went on a rampage. Thing. Yeah, no, I love it. I was so into it. So for anybody who is afraid to hand over a piece of their business to that, to that VA or to take someone on to take mm -hmm. a look at their business, what would you say to kind of feel through those fears and just kind of do it anyway? Can you repeat the question again? <laughs> if somebody was afraid to hand over a piece of their business or to a VA yeah. or to take a look at these systems because they're just so overwhelmed by everything that they have going on that they don't even know where to start and they're like right. so f afraid to reach out to a specialist, what would you say to kind of combat that fear a little bit? I think... Or if somebody's coming to you, like like an ideal client comes to you, what is what are some of their biggest roadblocks of of starting a system mm -hmm. when it comes to roadblocks there's a couple of things one of them is oftentimes they have a crm and of course like they don't know where to start because um <laughs> they're like i don't know what to do with this because oftentimes crms everyone talks about them but you don't realize you actually have to do the work yeah in order for it to, to reap its benefits same thing for a va you have to do the work the onboarding stuff and all of that before so that you know they can get trained um but what i always would say is one be prepared for the work there's always going to be some work because you are the ceo in the business there's no real i don't i don't believe that there is a true way to fully outsource something mm -hmm. um there's always going to be something that requires your attention even if it's very minimal unless it's automated number two is that everyone makes mistakes and of course like a mm. lot of people are like I need this system to be like fully perfect and like um, fully streamlined and with like no like no like missing cracks and whatnot um, and in reality at first it's going to take a lot of give and take and a lot of trial and error because you are trying and doing things and I think that um, we should get our, give ourselves a little bit more grace um, when it comes to implementing something new and I think like clients in general if you're letting them know like hey like, I'm just trying out this new CRM and stuff like I'm so sorry we got this like early on yeah. I think that's going to be a, like a make or break if you're letting them know yeah um, with that that to say um, with CRMs I always recommend people like time and time again test out your workflows on yourself because you know so often we want to make sure that things are looking good um, we get too excited and then, you know, the client ends up getting something by mistake. And then you have that whole thing of like, oh, I'm so sorry that I wasn't supposed to do that. And then you kind of get like a little bit like worried that's mm. going to happen again. And then you end up not using it. And you kind of like revert back to what you were doing before because that's what yeah. you need to do. So I, there's no harm in like putting just a test person and literally sending out all the things yeah. you need to by your, to yourself and be able to figure out what's going on and those are really like kind of the roadblocks that i've um ex uh, like my clients have experienced because of that um yeah. of like they're not sure they want to make sure it's perfect or they're just like really not sure where where to start with right that. gotcha okay yeah that makes sense too so you love dubsado and that's kind of like your thing right how did you did you test other platforms before saying this is the one i'm gonna marry <laughs> do you recommend any <laughs> other ones <laughs> um yeah so i had been doing well i'm still kind of doing honeybook still on the side mm -hmm. uh, i still i started out with honeybook at first and then I moved over to Dubsado because of business priorities. And I always recommend, I like one of the many things that I recommend when it comes to looking out for a CRM is like, what are your current priorities in your business? Are you just wanting something that just 
can manage your clients in one place or are you looking for something a lot more robust that can automate a lot of things that don't really need your like full attention and for me i really wanted a platform that could automate a lot more for me so i wasn't in the back end so much mm -hmm. and for me like honeybook doesn't like truth be told honeybook doesn't offer that that much um it is very easy to use it's very like you know a very clean and nice interface but that wasn't really important to me and so i moved over to dubsado um that to say when it comes to setting up crms for clients i realized that um and especially with people who have been running their business or a little bit more advanced they're wanting to streamline their business a lot more i find that it's really hard to do that with um honeybook even though like it is really nice for other things but with those priorities it's really hard to be able to work around that we can it's possible but it just makes it a lot um more difficult to do that and so now that I've, I've kind of realized over time like you know what um i think i just want to like focus more into Dubsado, sure. um, simply because i know that i know what it offers and i've worked with both of them enough to i guess say that i'm a little biased at this point <laughs> with it but like at honeybook i always recommend to people who are like hey i'm just getting started i really want to just get my toes dipped in and just have like a really basic you're not looking for much um honeybook is a really really great place especially if you're on a budget too okay got it i've dipped my toe into honeybook as of right now um for myself okay. and actually recommended it to a client to dip her toe in and mm -hmm. so far it is good but i do see um where it may have certain limitations mm -hmm. if you're looking for some of those extra extended uh experiences that you had talked right. about right right so, so that's very good to know so thank <laughs> you for that um so something we talked about last time is i respect respect how much you niched down to mm -hmm. all specifically to wedding photographers and now to expand a network of similar creatives. Yeah. Was that really hard for you to niche down. Was it scary to niche down? Cause I think people are always so hesitant to do it, but then it proves to be so successful when they actually yep. do it. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So I think niching is one of those things that you have it is a trial and error type of thing for per each person to person. So I had back in like when we were speaking November, I niched down to wedding photographers only. And from going from working with business coaches, which is pretty much like mm. really broad to working with photographers, it felt like it was like a big shrink for me and my experience. It felt like I was like almost starting from scratch because mm. I had to completely turn all my content and like who I serve to and my content and everything um, over to a completely different audience. So it just felt like I was talking to no one for a while. Yeah. But um, when it comes to niching down overall, it will take time for people to start realizing, oh, okay, like she's actually speaking to um, wedding photographers only. And for me, I felt like at that point when I was um, niched down to wedding photographers, photographers, excuse me, <laughs> I felt like there were a lot of opportunities outside that I was missing. So I was getting, during that time, I was getting a lot of messages, even from creatives of asking like, Hey, do you do this for creative? Do you do this for creatives? And I was like, eh, like not at the moment, only for wedding photographers. And from there, like kind of, I, I felt like I wanted to, but then like, like I was like, um, oh, I'm, I'm kind of like niche down at the moment, but then I eventually made the decision to expand it. And since then, like, it's just been like a world of a difference. Um, but it's not to say that niching is bad. It isn't. Um, it will take time um, to be able to speak to your audience as, as is when you are slowly like, you know, changing directions. But when you are niching down, it makes a world of a difference. And for people who are reaching out to you to understand who you're serving, because there's been so many people um, when you're not niching down that aren't your ideal clients. Yeah. And I think over time you quickly realize like you only want to serve, um, you know, these, these people where it's like business coaches or creative entrepreneurs, web designers, whoever it is, you realize who you like and who you don't like. And I don't think it's wrong to say, um, you know, I, I don't serve these people and I, I prefer to serve these other people. Yeah. I think even going off about that a little bit, it's, it's less about the specific of just wedding photographers or just mm -hmm. business coaches. I feel like it's more about 
do your values match up? Do your, do you share similar business missions and goals yeah. and do you mm-hmm. vibe as a, on a personal level? Cause I yeah. think that's something that people forget too. It's like, you're going to spend a lot of time with these people. Mm-hmm. And, and it's not to say that you have to have the same opinions about everything, mm-hmm. but it's more of the fact of like, you know, when you get on a call with somebody, yeah, yeah, she's my people or yeah, yeah. Like they can run in my yeah. circle. Or we, yeah. can, we can have, we can like different foods and we can like different things, yeah. but there's this overall sense of like, she's my people that I think will allow for you to look at that niche of like, no, she may not be a wedding photographer, but she's still my people. And that's mm-hmm. that, you know, it will include her in my expansive network of a niche. Yeah. And it makes your experience, I think a lot, a lot better as well. Instead of like you feeling awkward of like, oh, like, I'm not sure if I, um, like, can vibe with this person or I'm not sure how they're feeling because if you're not, if you can't relate to them, it makes it a lot harder to be able to almost break through that wall. Cause you have to get to know the person and yeah. their business and how they run. It takes a little time, yeah. but when you are with your people, it makes it so much easier to be able to better understand their mission. And like, if you are a social media manager, how to be able to like create their content and how kind of they go about, because it's kind of relatively similar, yeah. <laughs> similar. I wouldn't say, wouldn't want to say the same. So it makes it a lot easier in your experience and how you deliver as well. Yeah. And I feel like a follow-up question that somebody may be wondering is, well, how do I do that? How do I make people see my mission, my values, my morals of that I have in business? And how do I have people relate to me on that human level before they, you know, mm. get to me and find out that we don't buy it? And what I would say, and I'm sure you would agree is, that's where the personal branding piece comes in and where our branding really takes a life of its own of what we're portraying inside our business from everything from email marketing, inserting a little bit of our personality there as well as like reels, TikToks, Instagram stories and everything in between. And it doesn't have to be this whole big marketing plan of personal branding. It could be little hints here and there. Mm -hmm. You have no idea the amount of messages that I get when I put up like, you know, an episode of Grey's Anatomy is making me cry after freaking seven (laughs) watching this damn show every time I say I'm gonna stop it like or posting that I got a new flavor of coffee for my espresso. So those are the messages that I feel like I get the most response for because people mm-hmm. are craving that human connection. Yep. yep. And it, it, like I was saying when they get on the phone with you they feel like they already know you. And it's really a no brainer of yeah they're my niche target market because they number one need my help. They need my expertise they need my zone of genius but they also resonate with me on some yep. kind of basic human level. Yeah. And what blows my mind is that we don't realize how many people are watching us. Like they, we've never interacted with them, but they're watching. Like we don't even realize that these human connections are what is subconsciously what we don't know of creating potential clients for in the future. Yeah. And I think that's just just like so mind blowing. Even I get like, you probably get messages like I've been following you for so long. Yeah. I'm like, like, Oh, never saw you. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But then it just makes it a lot easier. Like both me and you, it just feels like, you know, we literally have been talking forever. Yeah, exactly. Um, Because, (laughs) you know, we've been able to like relay in terms of like talking in Instagram and stuff. And I always, if you can do voice memos, please do voice memos. It's, it just makes it a world of a difference in connection and being able to relate to someone on a human like connection level. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like you know, with, um, free trainings that I do and people sign up for it, I'll have their, include their Instagram handle in the forum to sign up Mm -hmm. and then I'll go and message them and send them the voice note. And there's so Mm -hmm. many times I've gotten messages back saying, wow, I've never gotten a message from anyone, let alone a voice message. And it's, it was something I was nervous about at first to do, Mm -hmm. but then again, it's like, you can delete the message as many times as you want until you get it right. (laughs) So, you know what I mean? So, (laughs) so get into your, your zone and get into the kind of flow that you want to say. And I think it's just that brand experience, that personal brand experience that's Mm going to do crazy amounts of, of extra work for your brand with such a minimal effort. Yeah. And it also takes practice too. I mean, I think that a lot of us, they, when we don't show up, of course, like it, it makes it hard to be able to go about, but as so long as we continue practicing our own personal brand, just talking literally like every day, but personally, I wouldn't want for someone to be like one face on Instagram and then you meet them and exactly. realize they're 
completely different than what you expect. Yeah. And when you're able to just like show up as you are, like it's okay to make mistakes. Everyone has mistakes. You don't have to make everything perfect all the time. Totally. Um, it just, it just makes it so much seamless. And I would rather appreciate saying like, Hey, Danielle, we're going to meet in person. And I know that how we're talking now isn't going to change or it's not going to be different when, you know, when we meet in real life. Yeah. Oh my God. Can we meet in real life? Can we that happen <laughs> when I move, yes. <laughs> yes. Come back. <laughs> um, yeah. I love that. And I, I feel like that's the theme. It's like I, I'm with this podcast, especially I'm collecting so many friends from around the world. I can't wait to just go visit once all this is over and past us. Honestly. Where's the first place you're going once school is over besides moving back to the States? Where's like a place you've been dying to travel? To. that I've been oh that I've been dying to travel to um or are you really just I, looking forward to be back in back in the states right now <laughs> the states, honestly um I mean we're moving to Texas we haven't figured out where but I don't like I've never lived in Texas I was born and raised in Michigan um but there is definitely like so many places that we're looking forward to and camping and just, I'm looking forward to no more like little to no winters honestly yeah um, so I think that's, we're probably going to be like uh, going around Texas at first and probably going, um, around, I think we're doing like a big old road trip from Michigan to Texas. So cool. Yeah. I hear more and more entrepreneurs moving over to Texas. I hear that too. It is, mm. It's booming right now. It's definitely booming. Interesting. That's a different topic for a different day, guys. <laughs> um, cool. Okay. So besides Dubsado, are there any systems that you would recommend or what are some systems that you use to, for in your business, whether that's email marketing or anything in between? Yeah. So, um, I use Dubsado for a majority of my client management and calendar scheduling. Mm -hmm. Um, both of those are taken care of. I use wave right now for like accounting. I've used it since I've started and it's really the only one that I can use right now because anything else doesn't work outside of the States and yeah. I'll have European bank account. So I'm kind of stuck in the middle. Gotcha. Um, I used to use HoneyBook of course. Um, but that also isn't available outside of the States. Um, email marketing. I used to use Flowdesk. I still have it, but I have not used it very much, but I do love the interface. I love, you know, the way that it is and it's very e easy to use. I heard it's very pretty but as well. <laughs> <laughs> it is um it, you can get very very lost in there yeah. um for scheduling i use later but i've kind of been trying i'm still finding what works best for scheduling because i've kind of had issues with all the scheduling platforms yeah so you just kind of have to find one and be okay with it <laughs> yeah there's always like little quirks that they're working out i guess because instagram really doesn't like them like they don't love the mm -hmm. schedules because they want mm -hmm. you to spend time inside the app um That's true. i've used planally for a really long time i've never tried later planally has minimal issues the only thing that i've run into is sometimes when the photos are published they come up a little blurry sometimes not i have time. noticed that yeah i had yeah. a client use planally and they came out blurry sometimes weird i don't know why it does that it's like a hit or miss though it's not with everything but, yeah okay yeah. so anything else besides later that we should take a look at not really. I really try to keep it simple for now. So it's really mostly you're pretty much all on Dipsado, which is really, yeah. that's like such a lifesaver. Cause I feel like I'm in Google calendar and I'm in zoom to schedule meetings and now I'm in a sauna to schedule stuff. And I'm over here and I'm over yeah. there and right now it's working. So I feel like, I feel like maybe I should hire you. <laughs> like, I feel <laughs> like, like I'm all over the place, but it works for me. It's like my chaotic mm -hmm. kind of mess that I've created or I could see someone mm -hmm. being like, I don't even know how to hand this over. I don't even know yeah. where to start yeah. with explaining my method of madness. Yeah. And I mean like, okay, there are things that do integrate with each other. Like I use Google calendar. Yes. For Dubsado, but because they integrate, if I schedule something right. in Google and I send the link in Dubsado, they kind of talk to each other and do their own thing. And I don't have right. to worry about it. Um, but other than that, yeah. Like I think a lot of people when they have, as you say, like a chaotic mess that works for them. Um, but sometimes it gets to the point where they're like, I'm, I'm doing way too much. Like I, I need to be yeah. just in my one way or another. Um, and that's why I always, <laughs> I always have people tell me like, Oh, I need to make sure I have things organized. I was like, that's, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. 
don't wait until things are organized because like, you know, there are experts who can help you be able to organize what you're trying to make clear of. And I think that I don't want to say it's an excuse, but rather like, I know that we want to be able to like clean up, you know how we like clean up hotels, even though we, yes. <laughs> Housekeepers are going to come and clean. <laughs> yeah, totally. so it's like I'm just doing my job for you. Like you don't yeah. have to do it for you know for yourself. And like I always like to make sure, like, hey, this is exactly what we need. Just do that, and let me just take care of the rest. Because so I like to say the messier the better, because then I can really see how you work things, where things are happening, what are what like how can we streamline things? Because if things are kind of like organized, and you just kind of make things. Yeah. Um, then it makes it really hard for me to be able to say like, okay, this is how your process is. Cause I have to learn what, what, how you get from onboarding to offboarding or whatever. Um, but also like everything in between. And so I try to make sure that I have as much information, as much detail as possible, what you want, and then be able to make sure that we have a clear plan on what we need to do, what we need to take out and streamline. Yeah. Okay, good. So it's okay to be vulnerable <laughs> with you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Got it. Love it. Okay, so my next question is, and I ask this on every um, episode, so you might remember this question. But I think I know. Was there a time in your life where you were living off-brand, meaning you weren't living in alignment, you weren't being authentic to yourself, and how did you navigate that to live back on-brand? This wasn't the question that I <laughs> <laughs> Um, (laughs) when did I feel off brand? I want to say, I think, I think the time that I felt off brand was actually the time that we were talking. Really? Yeah. Because I was in the mid, like it was very much like early on and I was trying to figure out what the heck to do with everything. So I was just like throwing stuff out there. And I think at the time I was I was really hit. I think during that, the, the season of my time of my season, season of my, I don't even know what it is. Um, I was hitting really low incomes and it was just not, it was just like a really low time in my business. And I think, I don't remember what was going on, but I know that something was, I don't remember. And it was, it just felt like I, nothing was going right. I was just kind of throwing things out there. I did not feel in alignment with myself, with myself or with my brand. Um, I do remember like getting super burnt out by like mid December um, and overall just feeling like, what the heck, <laughs> what the heck yeah. is going on? Yeah. Um, I knew that, you know, there's always like a light at the end of the tunnel type of situation. You know, we have our ups and downs in business, but I just did not feel like myself really. Yeah. <laughs> and, like trying to figure things out on my own and, and whatnot. And like, since then I, I do have a business coach who's been helping me tremendously. Yeah. Um, but at that time, I just, I, I did not feel like myself, like yeah. being really vulnerable. <laughs> and that's, that's crazy. It, mm-hmm. it, thank you for sharing that first of all. And it's crazy how sometimes we don't even recognize we're in a season of being off brand until mm-hmm. we're out of it, but we know yep. something is just not freaking right. And yeah. I, I mean, I'm sorry that you went through that, but it's also probably been such a huge learning lesson for you. Yeah of referring back to why you're doing this first place and that mm-hmm. foundation on those kind of missions and values that we were talking about in the, in, in a previous yeah. conversation are bringing those back to light. And it's okay to like stick to those things or change those a little bit mm-hmm. to make sure that you don't hit those points of burnout more frequently yep. than rare. And you don't yep. overwhelm yourself with trying all the things and really recognizing where your zone of genius is, which is yeah. super powerful. Yeah. One thing that has actually really helped in terms of like, if we're talking about burnout a little bit right now is recognizing your personal signs of when you are stressed, because of course, like when you're stressed then it will lead to like burnout and stuff. So for example, for me, I'm generally a clean person. I like to have things clean before I like do work. So I know when I'm stressed, when I do not want to clean, like the dishes are piling up in the sink when I don't want to really like do anything or cook or anything. That's when I know that I'm like stressed and I need to like hold up and I need to pump the brakes. Mm. It takes a bit because you have to recognize, okay, what do I do? And I think everyone has those habits. Yeah. Um, but it's recognizing those once you start realizing, then you can actually say like, okay, I need to probably pre- break, like 
slow down a little yeah, bit. Yeah, take a second. Um, yeah, take a second because otherwise if we're just like, I'm just gonna, gonna ignore it and just keep going, it's not gonna end up real great. And so that's really what's helped so much um, you, over the last six months is just really having um, a way in recognizing those um, yeah. signs for yourself. That awareness yeah. is key for sure. Mm -hmm. Great. Well, glad you're back on brand path for you. <laughs> um, my last question for you is what are you working on right now and where can we find more of you and any kind of last words of advice for anyone who needs to clean up the mess they created? <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, there's, there's so many, I think. Um, but when it comes to, oh, my internet says unstable. Am I okay? Yep. You're totally good. Okay. Um, when, so currently right now I'm, I'm accepting clients when it comes to if you're needing like a quick turnaround like a quick turnaround for setting up your crm um i'm taking bookings for june <laughs> i was like what month I'm are we in <laughs> i know everything's blending together in this weird i time. know i know so june and even q uh, q3 a i'm taking spots um as well as i i do have a longer form support um, and I generally like to advise those for people who really have a lot of things that they want to automate or clean out or like they want support with like some launching automation stuff. Um, that's where we can do like a more like longer form support. I also am offering applications for those um, June and Q3 um, and so on. Um, I'm really just like focusing on those with those with my with that current clients mercy my tongue is getting very tight right now <laughs> we're um, almost at it i promise <laughs> <laughs> but i'm on instagram i'm very much there yeah she often. is very much there she was doing fun stuff definitely go follow her over there <laughs> yeah so i'm i'm there i will be yeah i'll be i'll be gone there'll be a lot of puppy content hint hint coming hey, up with i saw that i said because okay guys in her last intro at the bottom that last line where i said getting a puppy in the last next couple of months, it used to say petting every puppy or dog that came by or something like that. So yeah. So we switched to, she's Yeah, like, I'm getting a dog. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be happy. Um, and then in terms of like last advice, just be vulnerable. Just, yeah. just really say like, it, it's, it's, it doesn't hurt to say that you need help and it, it, there's nothing wrong with it either. Yeah. Um, because we all deserve to be confident in our business and feel empowered both inside and out. Not just, you know, <laughs> I got the chills. Do you see that? <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> um, yeah, because our Instagrams and our websites, yeah, they're gorgeous, but we deserve to feel empowered and um, confronted in their back end as well. Yes. Amen, sister. That was awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Well, thank you again for re-recording this episode, hanging out with me again. Maybe I just sabotaged the episode on purpose so I could talk to hey, you. Hey, I mean, this. I don't mind. <laughs> good luck with your move and good luck with the move to the States. And I can't thank you so much. Happy content. I'm so excited. We'll talk to you soon. See you.